Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, still on Mathematics N3. Uh, in this platform, we shall be working on uh, question number two from uh, November 2016 paper that is uh, for the members uh, video. So if you are part of the membership uh, class, then uh, that's a video for you guys. And uh, we just hope this video finds you well. And uh, we are revising as much as we can uh, wherever we are. All right, so I'm not going to waste much of your time. I'm going to quickly rush through the questions that we are given. The first part was for you to uh, express uh, the square root of 0, uh, 0,125 as a power of 4. Okay, we are given to express this as a power of 4. Okay, so this is what you're going to do uh, from this uh, expression. Uh, let's take this. This is a 2.1. Okay. We are given to express uh, 0, 0,125 as a power of 4, okay? We actually do not know the answer, but we know that this is supposed to be given as a power of 4. So we can just say, let this whole part be equal to 4 to the exponent of x. We want to know the power that is going to affect in, the, in this space of 4, okay? So that is what it means. So what you need is to solve for x. So for you to solve for x, uh, this is a normal type of equation where you can express uh, 0, 0,125 as a fraction, all right? So if you do not know, uh, you can just use your calculator direct. Okay, so let me just share another screen which has got a calculator so that we can see our calculator here. All right, so that's what we have. You can just use your calculator 0, 0,125 like this is equal to one over eight. So as you can see, this gives us uh, the square root of one over eight. So we're gonna have the square root of one over eight, which is equal to four to the exponent of X. So it's for you to solve. Uh, we know that square root of means to the exponent of a half. So this can be written as one over eight to the exponent of a half is equal to four to the exponent of X, okay? Remember your exponents guys, for you to solve for X, you are supposed to make sure that the bases are the same since the X is on the exponent. So make sure that the bases are the same. So what you can do is to rewrite in simplest form of which we know that uh, one over eight can be written as, okay, let me just do like this. Okay, one over eight can be written as one over two to the exponent of three, okay? Uh, one over eight, two to the exponent of three is eight. And this can be written as two to the exponent of minus three. Remember from your laws of exponents, x to the exponent of minus a is same as one over x to the exponent of a. So if you are to convert this part of one over two to the exponent of three, it's gonna be two to the exponent of minus three. So we can rewrite this as two to the exponent of minus three, but there is an exponent which is already there of one over two is equivalent to four in terms of two. So if we are to check four in terms of two, that's two to the exponent of two, but already there is an exponent of X that we are given. Okay, so which law are we going to apply from our exponents? X to the exponent of A to the exponent of B gives us X to the exponent of AB. So if there is an exponent and another exponent, you combine the two exponents. So that's it. Uh, we are going to have minus three, times one over two, which is minus three over two, is equivalent to two to the exponent of two times x, which is two x. Once you are at this stage, take note, once at this stage, it means that you can equate the exponents because the bases are the same. If the bases are the same, therefore you can equate the exponents. That's minus three over two, is equal to two X. So to find X, just divide by two both sides by two both sides. So this whole fraction is going to be divided by two. So therefore our X is going to be, uh, if we divide by two here, uh, we can just use our calculators direct. Uh, that's in bracket minus three over two. Whatever that we get, we divide by two like this. Okay, so this is going to be minus three over four. So our X is minus three over four. But remember where we introduced our X here, we introduced our X at this part where we said uh, 0, 0,125, the square root of this is equal to four to the exponent of X. So therefore we can rewrite this as the square root of 0, 0,125 is equal to 
4 to the exponent of x, which is 4 to the exponent. Our x is minus 3 over 4, so it's going to be to the exponent of minus 3 over 4. So that was the question. Uh, that's what they actually wanted you to do or to simplify. There can be so many ways that you can use. Yeah, so many ways, guys. You just choose which one is best for you. Okay, on number two, solve for x. So solving for x, that means you are finding the value of x from this part. Okay, so that's a log that we are given in six marks. Show all the steps. The use of a calculator is excluded. That means the calculator is not needed in this case. Okay, so let's just write our question down and see what was supposed to happen here. So this is 2.21. We were given the logarithm 2 log of x. Okay, so this is 2 log x uh, plus log 3 over 4. We minus the logarithm of uh, 2x plus 3 over 4 like this is equivalent to 0. Okay, so that's a nice log, guys. That's a nice log. Uh, what can we do? Uh, in this case, I want to avoid working with the... Uh, a negative logarithm. So what I'm going to do is to uh, collect the logarithms that is called x. There is x here, there is x here. So I'm just going to collect them to one side of the equation, which means I'm going to leave this logarithm. There is no x on this part. We do not have x here. So I'm just going to leave this uh, on this part here. So someone might want, why are we even collecting these terms with x together? Why are we doing this? Okay. Uh, if we are to, okay, let me write this stage so that I'll explain. So I'm, like I said, I'm going to leave this part here. So I'm going to leave log three over four on the left-hand side. That means I'm going to transpose the other part of the equation now to the other side of the equation. So start with the negative. Here, there's a negative on the log. So if you transpose to that side, definitely it's going to be a positive. So this will be a positive log two x, plus three over four like this, okay. If we transpose two log x to the other side, it's a positive here, so it's going to be a negative. So it will be negative uh, two log x, okay. I want you to be very, very careful. Follow these stages in a nice way. These are logarithms. And if you are given this type of a condition, it means the base is 10. If the base is not indicated like this, it means you are having a base of 10, a base of 10, a base of 10 here. So the bases are the same. So that enables you to apply the laws of logarithm because you can see that here we are subtracting the logarithms and the bases are the same. So you can subtract, you can divide the numbers. Remember your laws of logarithms that the logarithm of M minus the logarithm of N gives you the logarithm of M over N. Why are we doing this? So that we can have a single logarithm. These are two logs that we have. Okay, so you can have a single logarithm, but it is going to be difficult because of this number two that we are seeing here. It's now going to affect this law because there is a need for us to have log m, log m without a number here. So which law are you going to apply? P log f m is the same as log m to the exponent of p. So if a number is multiplying a log like this, you can raise that number to be an exponent. So that means we can raise 2 to be an exponent of x first before dividing the numbers. So it is going to be log 3 over 4 is equal to log 2x plus 3 over 4 like this. Okay, then minus, if we raise this, it is going to be log x to the exponent of two. We have raised this to be an exponent, so it's now log x squared, all right. At this stage, we can tell or we can note that we are now having a log here and a log, just like what I said. So you can apply this law where we are, we are subtracting logarithms, we divide the number so that we can have a single logarithm. So it is going to be log three over four like this is equal to, we divide the terms that are affected by the log 2x plus 3 and x squared. We divide these together under one logarithm. So it is going to be log 2x plus 3 over 4. Everything over x squared like this. That is a single logarithm that I'm referring to. So why having a single logarithm? There is this most important law or a concept about logarithms. If I am given logarithm of x in base of a, which is equivalent to the logarithm of y in base of a, as long these bases are the same, 
it means x is equal to y. Therefore, x is equal to y. That is what it means. So from this concept, we can note that we have got the same consideration. Remember I told you we are in base 10. Yes, yeah, base 10 is base 10. So we can equate these numbers because we are remaining with a single log on both sides. So therefore, it's easier for us to, to equate these logarithms. So we are going to have it this way. We are now equating the numbers. So it is going to be 3 over 4 is equal to 2x plus 3 over 4, everything over x squared. This is the stage that we are now. That's a normal equation. We are no longer on logarithm. This is now a normal equation where you can cross multiply to remove the fractions. So if we cross multiply this part, what are you going to have at the end? Uh, this is going to be x squared times 3, which is 3x squared is equal to 4 times 2x, which is 8x. 4 times 3 over 4, you can use your calculator to multiply, but that is 3. 4 times 3 over 4 like this, which is a 3. So this is going to give us 3. So that's a plus 3. So I can transpose these numbers or these expressions to one side of the equation because that's now a quadratic equation. So 3x squared, 8x to this side, that's minus 8x. 3 to that side, that's minus 3 is equal to 0. So from this quadratic equation, we can solve for x. All right, so how do we solve? It's either you're going to use the quadratic formula or you're going to use a factorization method. I don't know which one is best for you. Okay, so let's apply the factorization first. We are going to factorize uh, separately. 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 is equal to 0. So how do we factorize this one? Remember, the coefficient of x squared is not 1, so you have to do the longer way of factorizing. Multiply the first term and the last term. Uh, that's we just want to factorize this part, okay? So this is going to give us uh, negative 9x squared. Do we have factors of negative 9x squared? But if we add these factors, we must obtain the middle term, which is uh, negative 8x. Yes, we've got these numbers. That's negative 9x and x. If you multiply these two numbers, you obtain negative 9x squared. If you add these two, negative 9 plus 1, that's negative 8. So you replace these numbers into the middle term, that's 3x squared minus 9x plus x, then already there was a minus 3. Okay, grouping these into two so that we can factorize. Remember, guys, your factorization, you group into two. So you can factor out uh, the highest common factor between the two terms, which is 3x, which is going to be x minus 3. Uh, already we've got x minus 3 here, so we factor out 1. So this is remain as x minus 3. The two brackets are the same. So it is going to be x minus 3. We remain with 3x plus 1. Please revise factorization, guys. Please do revise factorization. Okay, so this is what we are obtaining from the two brackets. That's x minus 3 into 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. So either one of these numbers must be equal to, one of these brackets must be equal to 0. Either x minus 3 must be equal to 0 or 3x minus plus 1 is equal to 0. So what are the values of x? So as we can tell, or as we can see here, x is going to be positive three if we transpose, or x is going to be equivalent to, if we transpose one to the other side of the equation, it will be minus one, then you divide by three. So that will be minus one over three. So these are the values of x. But do these values correspond with what we have? So what you need is to substitute these values into uh, the logarithm. But uh, we've got uh, we've got three and minus one over three. We can't have a negative log because already here there's something like uh, let me show you here. We've got two log x. X log cannot be a negative. We can't have something like two log uh, minus one over three. That's mathematically wrong. So therefore, our x cannot be a third here. So therefore, our x is equal to only three, not minus a third. So x cannot be equal to minus a third. So these are the uh, possible solutions that we're supposed to have uh, after solving this uh, logarithm, guys. Okay, I hope you understand all the stages that we have taken. I'm going to simplify the last part of the equation. It's also to solve. So all you need is to ask yourself, what am I actually doing to solve this type of an equation? Okay, so I'm just going to write down our equation. That's 2.22, and that is actually five marks, everything there. Okay, so let's just write our 2.22 aside. Okay, so this is 2.22. Uh, let's see what do we have. So this is, uh, we're given four 
over x minus two uh, plus two x minus three, everything over four minus x squared is equivalent to five over x plus two. For this type of equation, be very careful. Uh, we know that uh, if we are given expressions, actually what you need is to focus with the denominators here. Like this one, we can see that it's x minus two, we've got x plus two. These expressions, they start with x. But if we are to check on this one, it starts with four, not x. So start by simplifying such type of expressions. Okay, so here we can note that for us to start with an x here, we are supposed to factor out the negative on x so that it can be, if you factor out a negative four, it's going to be a negative. X squared minus X squared divided by, by a minus, it is going to be a positive X squared. So that it can be X squared minus four like this. So it means this expression can be written as minus into X squared minus four. So the negative that we see here, it is going to affect the sign which is already there. So there is a plus here. So a plus and a minus gives us a minus. So the whole a equation can be written as four over X minus two. Now it's a minus. So it's minus two X minus three, everything over the new expression that we have, which is X squared minus four, which is equal to five over X plus two. Okay, so as we can see, it's now a normal equation that we are used to. So we can factorize X squared minus four guys. That's a difference of two squares. So this can be written as two squared. So that's a factor, that's a difference of two squared. So we just have two brackets. Uh, one is going to add, another one is going to subtract the square roots uh, of the given term. Square root of x squared, that is x. Square root of four, that is two. So you're going to have x plus two, x minus two, which is equal to five over x plus two. Okay, so that's it. Clear fractions. So you can actually clear fractions here. How can we clear fractions? We multiply by the LCM e each and every term or the LCD each and every term. So we've got x minus two, x minus two, x plus two, x plus two. So our LCM in this case is going to be that part of uh, x plus x plus two, x minus two. This will be your LCM. Okay, so let's just write it down. x plus two, x minus two. We do the same here, x plus two, x minus two. We multiply each and every term, x plus two, x minus two, each and every term. So as you can see, x minus two, x minus two will cancel. You remain with uh, four into x plus two. Minus, you do the same, x plus two, x plus x minus two, x plus two, x minus two cancel. You remain with minus into two x minus three, which is equal to, x plus two and x plus two, you remain with five into x minus two. So that's it. Or you can combine these fractions. Then after that, you can uh, equate your, still it's one and the same thing. Okay, so at this stage, let's solve, uh, expand brackets four times x, that's four x, four times two, that's eight, minus times two x, that's minus two x, minus times three, that's positive three is equal to five times x, that's five x, five times minus two, that's minus 10. So you can collect like terms, 4x minus 2x, which is 2x, 8 plus 3, that is 11, is equivalent to 5x minus 10. Okay, so let's collect the terms together again. Um, we can transpose. So I'm just going to leave 11 on this side here. So it's going to be 11. If I transpose 10 to this side, that's a plus 10, is equal to 5x, 2x to this side, it is going to be minus 2x, it was a positive. So 21 is equivalent to 3x, 5 minus 2, that's 3. Divide by 3, by 3, both sides. So 7 is equal to x. So therefore, our x in this case is equal to 7. That, that's what we have uh, from the whole of this expression that we're given. So guys, be very, very, very careful when attempting such typical questions because they are going to ask you these typical questions and you need to be very, very careful uh, when dealing with these questions. But uh, for now, that's what we had uh, from Amazon African Motives, working on mathematics and three netted engineering till we meet again.